10 Reasons Why Jerusalem Throughout the Bible is a Type of the Christian Church. This is part of the Old Testament Prophecy Series. But why is it important that we recognize that Jerusalem is a type of the church? And when we, when we do so, though, and we're going to look at that in this video, we see that much of the end time prophecy that is talked about in the Old Testament applies to us today. It applies to us in the Great Tribulation and the last day, all the things that lead up to the last day. It, it, like, for example, the siege and destruction of Jerusalem, which is the Babylonian captivity, it's discussed in the Olivet Discourse. It's part of the Great Tribulation, but it applies to us. And when we, look, we understand that we go back to those Old Testament passages, and it unlocks beautiful layers of meaning. We also see that Babylon in Revelation 17 and 18, which is the false Christian church and parachurches, is related to the Old Testament. And, and we see it opens beautiful meaning. A lot of things in Revelation 17 and 18 are quoted back in the Old Testament, in the book of Jeremiah, for example. And then when we look at this Babylonian captivity, which is a symbol for the Great Tribulation, about 25%, a quarter of the Old Testament, is discussing the fall of Jerusalem, the, the captivity. It's in Leviticus, it's in Deuteronomy, 2 Kings, 2 Chronicles, the major prophets. It's a major theme in those books about the, the fall of Jerusalem and the Babylonian captivity. Also, it's discussed in the minor prophets. That's why it's important to understand that Jerusalem is a symbol for the church, and it's a mixture of saved and unsaved. So let's go on in the study. Please consider subscribing to this channel. There's a little red button in the bottom right hand corner. And let's move on in the study. First, before we go on to look at the passages that indicate that Jerusalem is a type of the Christian church, what exactly is the church? The church in the New Testament is the Greek word ecclesia, which literally means the called out ones. It's, it can be a local church. For example, the church in the house of Priscilla and Aquila was a local church. It could be the church in Corinth, the church in Ephesus, but it also refers to the universal church all through the world. And we see, for example, in Hebrews 12, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. That's the church of all God's people. And we see in Ephesians 5, this is a great mystery. I speak concerning Christ and the church. That's the church. And Jerusalem is a symbol for God's church. But in the earthly church, it's a, it's a combination of those who are saved and those who are unsaved. We see that in the parable of the wheat and the tares. We see that the wheat and the tares grow together unto the harvest. We see that in Matthew 7. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. There's many in the church today that <clears throat> claim the name of Christ. They say, Lord, Lord, but that doesn't mean that they're a Christian. It's only those that do the will of the Father which is in heaven. Many shall say in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have cast out devils. In thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will pro profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. So we see in the visible earthly church, it's mixed. It's got saved people and it's got unsaved. But it's still Jerusalem is a symbol for that because Jerusalem in the Old Testament was the same way. It had a mixture of those who were saved and those who were unsaved. So now let's look at 10 reasons, 10 Bible reasons why Jerusalem symbolizes the church. Reason one, New Jerusalem is the bride of Christ. We see that New Jerusalem for eternity is the bride, it's the people of God, all of the people of God, all of God's people are New Jerusalem. We see in Revelation 21, I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband, the bride of Christ. It's God's people. God's people are represented here by New Jerusalem. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. God dwells with his people. They shall be his people. God himself shall be with them and be their God. I will show you the bride, 
the Lamb's wife. And we know that's the, the people of God. He carried me, me away in a spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. The first reason that we know that Jerusalem is a symbol for the church is that New Jerusalem is God's people for eternity. Secondly, we see that God will place his name in Jerusalem forever. We see in Revelation 3, He that overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. He shall go out, go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. That new name of Jerusalem will be on God's people forever. Contrary to that, we see the wicked king Manasseh, who set a graven image of the grove that he had made in the house, of which the Lord said to David and to Solomon his son in, his, in this house, and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. God's name is on his people forever, and his people are represented by Jerusalem. We see that in 2 Kings 21 and 2 Chronicles 33. God's name is on his people, and the name is Jerusalem. The third reason that we see that Jerusalem it represents God's people is that Jerusalem was the capital of Israel, and Israel is a symbolic term for all God's true people. We see that first, Israel was called the church in the wilderness. They were the called out ones in the wilderness in the Old Testament. True, that church was mixed just as it is today with saved and unsaved people. We see in Romans 9, they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. And in other words, there is a true spiritual Israel, which contains the children of God, whether they be of the fleshly Israel or not. They're from both Israel and the Gentiles. That's the true Israel. They which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. Somebody that's in the flesh is not the child of God. It's the children of promise which are counted for the seed. The seed are those of Israel. And we see that spiritual Israel is all of God's people. Galatians 3, there is neither Jew nor Greek. You are all one in Christ Jesus. And you become spiritual Israel. If you be Christ in your Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. First Peter 2, you are a chosen generation, a rural priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which have not obtained mercy, but now you have obtained mercy. And First Peter 2.10 is a quotation from Hosea 2.23. And in that passage, please read it. It refers to Israel. The true spiritual Israel are the children of God. They're the children of promise. And Israel is represented by its capital, which is Jerusalem. We also see that Christians are spiritual Judah, or spiritual Jews. And we know that the Jews, or the tribe of Judah, is where Jerusalem was. He is not a Jew which was one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a true Jew which is one inwardly, and in the circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter. All of God's people, whether Jew or Gentile, are Jews. They're spiritual Jews. The spiritual Judah. Deuteronomy 36, the Lord God will circumcise thine heart. To love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy your soul, that you may live. That's true Judah. Those are the true Jews. We are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. It's not about the flesh. It's about whether you're a Christian. And if you're a Christian, you're spiritual Jews. And again, the capital, Jerusalem, was in Judah. And it's, the, it's, the, it's of the Jews. The fifth reason that Jerusalem represents all of God's people is that Jerusalem is called the holy city. It's a holy city because that's where the holy people are. Only Christians are holy. God's people are holy. Jerusalem represents the place where God's people are. Isaiah 52, Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. 
for henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and unclean. That's pointing to Jerusalem being the location or the habitation of those who are holy and God's people are holy. Nehemiah 11, the rulers of the people dwelt at Jerusalem. The rest of the people cast lots to bring one of ten to dwell in Jerusalem, the holy city. Again, the tithe, one out of ten, represents God's people. I'll tag this slide for the video we've done on the tithe. But again, Jerusalem is holy. And we see God's holy people, 2 Thessalonians 2. God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification or being made holy. The word sanctification, has a, it's the same word as to be made holy of the spirit and belief of the truth. Hebrews 2.11 both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified, they who are holy, are all of one. That's God's people, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. It's God's people. It's the holy people live in a city that is holy, which is Jerusalem. Reason six. The church was first established at Jerusalem by Jesus Christ. Luke 24. That repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Jerusalem is headquarters. It's symbolic. Jerusalem is symbolic for where the church will reside. I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. That's where the church was going to begin. It's the words of Jesus. And then we see in Acts chapter 1 that they were waiting in Jerusalem. They're being assembled together with them, commanded that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. You shall be witness unto, unto me, both in Jerusalem, where the church started, then they go to Judea, Samaria, unto the utter parts of the earth, <clears throat> of the earth to spread the gospel. But the church began at Jerusalem. Acts 15, 2. Therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas should go up to Jerusalem. There was a conflict in the church. There was a disagreement about what salvation was about. But they needed to go to Jerusalem because that's where the location, the headquarters of the apostles and the elders, and they talked about the question. The church began at Jerusalem. It's an important symbolic reference to God's people. The seventh reason why Jerusalem is a symbol for the church is because Jerusalem is where the house of God was and Christians are the house of God. We see in 1 Timothy 3.15, If I tarry long, you may know that how you ought to be behave thyselves in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. The church was meant to have the truth, the truth of the Bible, the truth of the word of God. But it's called the house of God. And that's where the, the Jeru it was in Jerusalem. 2 Timothy 2.20, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and earth and some to honor and some to dishonor. That church, though, that house of God, has always been mixed with unsaved and saved, the wheat and the tares. But it's still the house of God. It's where God's people dwell. Hebrews 3.6, Christ is a son over his own house, whose house we are. We are the house of God. The house of God was in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a symbol of where God's people are. And we're his house if we hold fast the confidence and rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end, which all Christians will. We also see that Jerusalem is a type of the church because it's where the temple of God is. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Know you not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Well, the temple was in Jerusalem. Ephesians 2, Therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God. It's the house of God, but it's the temple too. The house of God includes the temple and are built upon the foundations of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the whole building fitly framed together grows into a holy temple. In the Lord, that's where God dwells in the temple. And God's people are the temple of God. And the temple was in Jerusalem. All Christians serve as priests in the temple. <clears throat> Ye also are living stones. You're built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices 
acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. We are the temple of God, and the temple of God was in Jerusalem. We also see that Jerusalem is chosen. Jerusalem was the chosen city. But we also see that God's people are chosen. Note 2 Chronicles 6.6, 6, I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there forever. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired, desired for his habitation. God has chosen Jerusalem, which is built upon Mount Zion. And we see Christians, many are called, but few are chosen. God's true people are chosen. It's the location of God's chosen people. John 15, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you go and bring forth fruit. We're God's chosen people, and we are represented by Jerusalem, the chosen city. He that, no man that entangles himself with the affairs of his life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. We're chosen soldiers in the city of Jerusalem. And finally, we see that Jerusalem above is the mother of us all. We note in Galatians chapter 4, Jerusalem, which is above, is free. We're all members of that spiritual, heavenly Jerusalem, which is free. We have fr freedom from sin. And Jerusalem is the mother of us all. Because we're born again. We're born out of the gospel being shared by other people and by the church of God. We see in John chapter 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again. And we're born of a mother, which is Jerusalem above. He cannot see the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. We're spiritually part of Jerusalem above. Jerusalem is a symbol of the church. Hebrews 12, you, you are come unto Mount Zion, where the Jerusalem exists, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. That, that city called Jerusalem today is just a physical place. We are part of heavenly Jerusalem, and Jeru which is talked about in the Old Testament, which is important because all the prophecy talks about Jerusalem. But it's a spiritual discussion. It's not about physical Jerusalem today, but we as Christians have become part of heavenly Jerusalem to the innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven and to God, the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect. All those who have preceded us, all those Christians that preceded us were, were, were in that same city, that heavenly Jerusalem. And we're, and with Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, we are part of Jerusalem above, Jerusalem in the Bible is a symbol. It's a beautiful symbol of where God's people are. Just a quick summary of the study. We've looked at 10 reasons, and there's probably many more reasons, but these are 10 reasons why Jerusalem is a symbol for the church. Could it be that we now understand, and when we read the Bible and we read the Old Testament, we think about Jerusalem, that city that's talked about many times, and we want to understand the symbolic meaning of it, that it includes us. All of the prophecy of the Old Testament is relevant to us. We're going to go on in the next video. We actually want to look at the word meaning, Jerusalem. What does that word mean? We're going to look at that because that has more beautiful truth about Christians. Please consider subscribing to this channel. And thank you very much for watching this video.